we have some news to share, don't we? Indeed. Uh, we have some news, and hopefully we'll have, uh, like usual, some questions here shortly. <clears throat> so um, I've got a couple of things I'd like to share first, if you don't mind. I do not. Let me see if I can make this work. Almost. So so close. All ha! Right. Winning. That looks good to me. Winning, as always, indeed. Um, so first up uh, was a blog post that I came across from uh, Martin Hemkin. A fantastic visualization on how uh, filters work um, <clears throat> in Intune. Um, so it goes through basically uh, some nice visualizations on how these filters work, how Intune resolves conflicts. Um, I, I can't think of anywhere else that I've seen this type of visualization to help us figure out how uh, filters um Oh, did they? There we go. I uh, was me. Sorry. <laughs> oh, all right. No, no problem. Just making sure it wasn't me. Um, uh, so, anyways, I, I can't recall anywhere else that I've seen uh, visualizations like this that help um, understand how the filters uh, actually go through and how the conflicts are dealt with or how overlapping filters are dealt with. Um, great blog post here. Um, so thank you, Martin, for putting that together. Uh, definitely, if you're using filters in Intune, um, give this a look. This is some great stuff. Uh, a couple of other things that I uh, came across here. A blog post from <coughs> uh, Nicholas Tinner, uh, basically kickstarting Mac OS management. Uh, Five-minute read, according to the estimate here on the blog post. Um, I'm sure if you were going through it step by step, it might take a little bit longer than five minutes. Uh, but of course, any of these quick uh, quick start guides or kick start guides, um, getting in and uh, doing some of these uh, new things, I think are, are worthwhile. So thank you, Nicholas, for putting this together. Uh, also came across... Um, those of you may have seen some uh, a blog post from Microsoft on how uh, bad guys are potentially using Quick Assist, um, and Martin Bankston put together this uh, blog post on how we can remove Quick Assist uh, using PowerShell and Intune. Uh, great little blog post here, um, uh, to the point of of the. Uh, Title of the blog post here, it's not just Quick Assist. You can reuse this and remove other built-in applications as well. But uh, the Quick Assist thing is a, a very hot topic this week, um, which is funny. This is something that uh, we've been talking about for uh, some time. Uh, you know, uh, Johan, you've uh, been a member of the audience when Jürgen and I have talked about customizing Windows 11 and why you might want to remove certain things. And Quick Assist uh, had its own slide for the last uh, at least year that we've been doing that presentation. Um, continued on talking about this at, at MMS a couple of weeks ago. So uh, it was quite interesting to actually see Microsoft blog about it uh, last week. Does that sound like it was last week? <laughs> I think it was two weeks ago, actually. About it. All right. <laughs> They're all blending together now. Um, but great resource here as well. A um, couple of other quick things uh, from Microsoft, uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you talk about the star of the show of Microsoft announcements uh, this week. Um, all right. Um, uh, let me see here if I can... Uh, I, I'll share these other two. You can pull it up while you, while you, while I finish up here. All right. Does that sound, does that sound all right? Uh, we have a deal. All right. Perfect. Uh, so if you're using organizational messages today in Intune, uh, these are moving over to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Uh, so just an FYI for those of you that are using organizational messages. And then we also got an improvement on... Um, or an announcement for an upcoming improvement on feature update policies in Intune. Uh, if you are using these, uh, the feature update policies, you should be seeing uh, over the next couple of days 
the ability to set feature updates as optional in these policies, uh, which is kind of interesting. That puts a little bit of control in the hands of, uh, of our users, um, which for some organizations uh, I think is a very good thing. Uh, for others, maybe not so much. Maybe they need a little bit more control, but having these options um, is something that uh, I feel like we even talked about that quite a bit on our course today. Having the options and the ability to control when you need it um, or have it be automated and less control when that's okay for your organization, I think is an important thing. The fact that we get those options is great uh, from my view. Yeah, I mean, if you have the opportunity to give users a chance to upgrade on their own terms when it's somewhat convenient for them, heck, why not? You don't have to worry about those users later when it's time to do the required upgrade. Uh, I was so excited when I saw this, so I immediately opened up my tenant and I started to look for these things like, no, it's not here yet. And then I read further on in that post like, all right, start to roll out on May 24. I'm like, dang it, that's Friday. Well, at least we know what we get to test this weekend. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, that is what I had. Some great stuff from around the community and from Microsoft themselves today. All right. Perfect. All right. Let me go ahead and see if I can make this green magic work. Uh, there. Uh, yay. Uh, this was announced uh, uh, this morning uh, at some point. Uh, next generation of Windows Autopilot is coming in. And this is not per se a Autopilot version 2 or whatever they have been calling that before, but it is additional profile in the platform together with some uh, nice changes around the UI, doing the enrollment status page, etc. But all in all, uh, during the year, we will see some enhancements for, for Windows Autopilot, and this blog post will tell you everything there is to know about it. Okay. Did you happen to catch a date in there? Because I couldn't find one. No, I think from MMS, they just mentioned at some point this year, but I, yeah. I, I didn't see any specific dates at all. All right. It's definitely not available now, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I can confirm. Uh, I know this is something that, that we're definitely excited to play around with, that's for sure. Yeah. But it is this, uh, this initial uh, additional profile uh, availability as well as I think there was, yeah, a little bit of better progress bar. Um, <laughs> the audience laughed when they presented this at MMS because, okay, is this going to follow the normal progress bar <laughs> timing or is it <laughs> going to be somewhat accurate? But. It's, it's better to show something like this for an end user instead of like a, a three, point, three bullet point of stuff they don't understand anyway. Yep. So, and then there was also some, uh, yeah, some comments and questions down here as well. But. <laughs> I like that top comment. I guess it's now official. It's, it's like the, I don't know that I'd call it the worst kept secret over the last couple of months, but uh, there have been signs. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they might not mention it at the MEM Summit in, in Paris. They mention it at MMS. And, well, in the digital era, those travel pretty quick. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Other than that, uh, Microsoft Build is going on this week. And together with that, uh, Microsoft had an event on Monday announcing some changes around uh, security, what they're working on there. Um, Few people have probably missed that there is a new security initiative going on. Basically, a trustworthy computing take two <laughs> kind of deal they're working on, but uh, that's a very big priority for Microsoft these days. Uh, we covered that a few times already here in office hours, but this is a good blog post uh, sharing some of what they're doing um, in Windows 11 on the security side of things. And then, of course, it was everything around AI during build and just before build here as well, uh, announcing Microsoft's focus on, on AI for, for the year to come. 
uh, not just software-wise, but also hardware-wise. So it was interesting to see um, a lot of different co-pilot uh, or AI uh, powered hardware um, PCs that are are capable of doing a good chunk of operations per second uh, through a neural processor instead of a regular uh, GPU. Um, so I did see that Microsoft Surface showed up with a few new devices. There was a Surface Laptop Business 7 Edition. There was a Surface Pro showing up. I saw that... I think I had that actually saved. Um, yeah, it was Windows Central that put that one up. But Lenovo announced uh, their model uh, that is supporting this platform. Uh, HP did the same thing uh, for their Omnibook series. So that will be this one here. Uh, I think the Lenovo was sixteen hundred dollars, the HP twelve hundred, or the other way around, uh, something like that. Uh, let's see if that was a, yeah twelve hundred on this one. So um, anyhow, many vendors are now coming out with hardware that is directly tied to the upcoming release of, of Windows eleven and all those capabilities. And uh, I think we'll have, uh, as we said many times, this is going to be the year of ARM, I think, uh, with all the new hardware coming out. And I saw one specification for, I think it was the laptop, the Surface laptop, where it will easily run 22 hours on battery playing video. And I'm like, yeah, I can use one of those. Yeah, if that battery life uh, that I've seen across these announcements is to be believed and actually is uh, that amount of time in real life, that's a hugely exciting improvement. That's that's the one thing all of my uh, uh, Mac OS friends, uh, you know, always refer to. Absolutely. And uh, Microsoft also released together with Qualcomm that they have a, or Qualcomm announced it, uh, that they're doing a dev kit, uh, like the Microsoft dev kit for uh, Volterra back in 2022. Uh, this one was announced today as well. Uh, a little bit more pricey. This one was nine hundred dollars. The other one was six hundred. But still, it, uh, uh, you can sign up for for pre-order information on this page here. Uh, I did that myself earlier, so uh, excited to see what that can become. So that one is effectively like a Gen two of the one that you got previously, right? I don't know because the, the old one was actually it was a Surface device, but it was a desktop. Oh, okay. So I'm not sure what this one is. Uh, so it looks like something else. All right. I will see. Time will tell. Indeed. Uh, on the less exciting news, uh, <laughs> we, we, we had a few customers reporting in that after upgrading to Config Manager 24 or 3, the MDT integration no longer works. And that is absolutely correct. It seems that 23 or 3 is not just breaking Microsoft's own console extensions. They break pretty much every other console extension also. Uh, forgot to test that part, unfortunately. So uh, currently, I don't know of any workaround uh, other than not using the MDT integration. Because right now, if you try to use it, the console crashes. And it's gone. You can edit sequences. You just can't create any new one. So, anyhow, let's see what happens there. Um, but I was a little bit sad to learn about that one. Indeed. Uh, not that we use MDT integration much these days, but there are a lot of customers out there that still has it. Maybe a good opportunity to reroute that in PowerShell. All right. And then I stumbled across this little snippet. Microsoft uh, announced a few um, improvements for Windows Terminal. And that was pretty much all I had in terms of updates.